as we mentioned in the previous video, our uh, goal now is to uh, find examples of relativistic forces, and we are going to do that uh, via the construction of uh, actions, Lagrangians and actions for uh, particles. As a warm-up exercise, we are going to do the same for uh, non-relativistic particles. And we start by reviewing uh, the Lagrangian uh, mechanics uh, of a particle that you should know. So we will do it uh, quickly. As you know, uh, the simplest way of constructing the Lagrangian is to combine the kinetic energy and the potential of, uh, in this case, of a particle. This is the example that I am going to consider all the time. So in Cartesian coordinates, uh, this kinetic energy is given by a half of the mass times the derivatives of the positions of the particle with respect to time that uh, conventionally we write like this x dot i x dot i while the potential visible is going to be a function of the positions of the velocities and maybe of time okay? and it represents the interactions of the particle with uh, external fields this Lagrangian only depends on uh, positions on the velocities the time derivatives of the positions and maybe on time then, if there are, uh, there is no dependence on derivatives of the positions higher than one, so there is no dependence of the Lagrangian in x double dot or uh, higher derivatives, the Euler Lagrange equations take this simple form. There is one equation for each variable, which means that uh, for a particle moving in three-dimensional space there are uh, three Euler-Lagrange equations, one for each xi. Something that uh, is interesting to discuss is whether these Lagrangian and these equations are invariant under Galilean transformations, because symmetry principles is something that uh, we are very interested in, but uh, we will do this later, because this invariance is not uh, simple. Okay, so uh, do these uh, equations, these Euler-Lagrange equations, imply the well-known uh, Newton equations of motion? Well, we'll see. Suppose that uh, we have uh, a simple potential that describes the interaction with a static force field, so it only depends uh, on x. There is, a no, there is no dependence on time or on velocities. Then, in this case, the partial derivatives of the Lagrangian with respect to the position are only the minus uh, the partial derivatives of the potential with respect to the position because the kinetic energy does not depend on the position, it depends only on velocities. Okay, and uh, the derivatives with respect to velocities are m x dot i, so the derivative with respect to time is this m double dot xi. As we have said, this means the second derivative with respect to time of the position. Okay, so we replace this uh, result into the Euler-Lagrange equations, and we can write them in this way. And, okay, this looks like the uh, second law of motion of Newton. This means that we just identify this as uh, the force. So the force equal to minus the gradient of the potential is uh, the standard uh, definition of uh, potential and uh, force for static uh, force fields. And this agrees perfectly well with uh, what we know. <coughs> Suppose that the potential is a more general potential that depends on velocities and time. Then in that case, uh, 
whatever we get in the right hand side of this equation so in the left hand side we just leave m and the accelerations the x double dot i whatever appears in the right hand side is automatically identified with the force just by using uh, newton's uh, second law So, and what happens if uh, the Lagrangian depends somehow on uh, derivatives higher than 2? We will see uh, later on how to find the generalization of these simple or Lagrange equations to that case. One definition that uh, one makes in Lagrangian dynamics and that it is very useful is that of the momentum conjugate to the position xi. So we have xi and then we have the conjugate momentum. Pi, which is defined as the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity corresponding to uh, the variable xi. Okay, in terms of this variable, the Euler-Lagrange equations take the form p dot i, the derivative of pi with respect to time equal to partial L with respect to xi and whatever appears here okay in the simplest case is just minus the partial derivative of v with respect to xi but whatever appears here we basically define as force okay uh, so the Lagrangian formalism looks like a different way of just a different way of finding the equations of motion okay as we know it's a very powerful uh, formalism but then there is a question I mean given certain equations of motion of a system uh, is there a unique Lagrangian that gives you these equations of motion via the Euler Lagrange equations or in other words uh, if uh, we have two Lagrangians again restricted to first derivatives of the position at most L1 and L2 Do they lead to the same equations of motion and when? Okay, the result <coughs> is that uh, this happens if and only if the difference between L1 and L2 is a derivative, a total derivative with respect to time, not a partial derivative. Okay. And it can only depend on x and t and not on x dot because, uh, okay. Let me remind you that this total derivative means that we take the partial of the derivative with respect to the xi and then the time derivative with respect to uh, xi plus the partial derivative of p with respect to t. Okay, so if b depended on x dot, there would be another term x dot i x double dot i and this term would uh, imply that l2 depends on second derivatives of i since we are restricting ourselves to lagrangians that only depend on uh, first derivatives of the positions at most uh, this p has to be restricted to a fun to be a function of only x and t we can uh, prove this uh, statement as a simple exercise so well, what I'm going to do is to find the equations of motion for the Lagrangian L2 and see L2 related to L1 in this way and see that uh, they reduce to the same equations as those that I would get from the Lagrangian L1. So first I compute uh, partial L2 with respect to xi. Okay, and this is just partial L1 with respect to xi plus partial xi d dt of p. Now you can check that uh, this partial derivative and the total derivative with respect to time commute okay, by using basically this expression and we just write this in this form, 
देते पार्सल डी पार्सल एक्स आई और इस कंप्यूट डे डेरिवेटिव पार्सल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ़ एल टू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स डॉट आई एंड दिस इस डे पार्सल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ़ एल वन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स डॉट आई प्लस एंड देन इफ़ वी लुक इनटू दिस टर्म डी डी टी बी डी ओनली डिपेंडेंस ऑन एक्स डॉट आई इस दिस टर्म because uh, we have assumed that b is not is only dependent on x and t and not on x dot so this is just partial b partial x i now we take the time derivative of this term and this is the dt partial l1 with respect to x dot i plus d dt partial b partial x i now the only Lagrange equations are the difference between uh, this result and this result and we see that uh, these total derivatives cancel and that the equations of motion uh, the only Lagrange equations for l2 are the same Euler Lagrange equation for L1. So what happens if uh, Lagrange depends on positions, uh, velocities, but also on accelerations? In this case, there is a generalization of the previous or the simplest Euler Lagrange equations that look like this. This part, uh, these two terms correspond to the standard Euler Lagrange equation, but there is a term uh, that uh, includes the higher order derivatives. So, how can we check if these correct equations are uh, correct? In the previous case, uh, when we we had Lagrange's that only depend on uh, positions and velocities. Uh, we could compare with the uh, uh, second law of uh, Newton uh, for the case of a standard uh, static force field. However, here, uh, well, there are not so many interactions that depend on accelerations, and uh, we have to justify where these equations come from. We will uh, do this by using uh, actions and the principle of least action. Uh, that will be our justification. And uh, okay, from that same principle, one can find uh, generalizations for Lagrangians that contain arbitrary number of derivatives. The Lagrange equations in general, okay, for the most general Lagrangian, takes this form. There is an alternating sum with uh, terms of higher order and derivatives minus now the term with uh, three derivatives of time. etc. These are the general equations. In uh, any case, now we can uh, ask the same question we asked before. When do two Lagrangians lead to the same equations of motion? In the case in which these Lagrangians can have higher derivatives. The answer is that uh, when this happens, when the two Lagrangians, L1 and L2, differ by a total time derivative of a function B, that contains now derivatives whatever one degree lower than uh, the degrees contained by L2 and L1 otherwise uh, we would have to say that L2 contains derivatives of uh, one order higher than L1 okay but in the context in which we use uh, the most general Euler Lagrange uh, equations this uh, theorem is completely true for any B.
you can check this okay in one case the point is that in one case uh, if if one of the two lagrangians has derivatives of higher order than the other you have to use the appropriate euler lagrange equations for that lagrange the proof is uh, simple you have you can find them in the lecture notes and it is it consists in uh, taking derivatives carefully and uh, also in checking uh, these properties of commutation of derivatives so we saw that uh, these two derivatives commute uh, sorry if uh, but now we are going to have to deal with this kind of commutators too and then what we find is this this minus ddxi and uh, in general if you have uh, n dots here so we can write this as partial with respect to the nth derivative with respect to time of xi you find that this commutator is minus the derivative the partial derivative with respect to the uh, nth minus one derivative with respect to time of xi using these results which i invite you to check you can check this uh, uh, these are just operators so let's make them act on the function uh, p for instance okay yes it's not uh, really necessary but it may help you okay i invite you to check these properties and uh, with these properties you can check uh, this that the result is true that any two lagrangians related by uh, a function of this form so the total derivative of something they lead to the same equations of motion there is an easy way to prove this uh, much easier than using the Euler-Lagrange equations of motion using the principle of least action